This is part 7 of JavaScript with ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to disable ASP.NET button after first click to prevent accidental double clicking. Preventing accidental double clicks on a submit button is very important for applications. If double clicks are not prevented, you may end up executing the same submit button code twice. This means if you are inserting data, duplicate rows may be inserted in the database table. We have an example here. This form captures the name and gender of an employee. If we double click the submit button, we end up inserting the same employee's record twice in the employee's table, as you can see on the right here. What we want to do is, upon the first click, we want to disable the submit button immediately and then display this message saying, please wait, which is an indicator for the user, you know, basically saying that the application is still processing, so please wait. And when this button is disabled, at that point, if you click on the button, nothing is going to happen. And we want to keep this button disabled until the request completes processing. Once the request has completed processing, that's when we want to enable this button back so that we can enter a new employee's details and then click the submit button once again so that the new employee details are stored in the employee's table. So let's see how to achieve this. The first step here is to obviously create this employee's table, which I have already done. And here is the SQL script to create the sample DB database and the employee's table. And at the moment, this employee's table is empty. I have also designed the web form. So if you look at this web form, we've got the text box to capture name, drop down list to capture gender, and the submit button. When we click the submit button, we are calling this function save data to database. And this function is also already implemented. All this function is going to do is save the data to the database table. So here we have the regular ADO.NET code. The first line right here is reading the connection string from web.config file. And if you look at the web.config file, we have a connection string that is pointing to sample DB database. And within this sample DB database, we have got the employees table. After we have read the connection string, we are using that connection string to build the SQL connection object. And then we are building the SQL command object this SQL command object is going to execute a stored procedure, SP insert employee, which I have already created. And here is that stored procedure. The stored procedure has got two parameters, name and gender, which we are inserting into employees table. Since the command object is executing a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object. And then we are building the two parameter objects. The name parameter is getting its value from the text box the gender parameter is getting its value from the gender drop-down list. And then we are associating name and gender parameters with the command object. And then we are opening the connection and executing the command. So straightforward ADO.NET code. And if you look at this ADO.NET code, it's going to execute in no time. So to introduce some artificial latency, I am making this thread that's currently executing this request to sleep for 3,000 milliseconds. That is three seconds. So let's go ahead and run this page now. And let's enter mark as the name, gender male. Now at the moment, the table is empty. So we don't have any records. Now let me double click the submit button. I actually double click the submit button. And look at this. And now we have the same employees record stored twice. And we don't want that to happen. As soon as we click the submit button, you know, the first time, immediately we want to disable that button. So accidental double clicks cannot happen. Okay? And to disable the button, we are going to make use of two attributes, use submit behavior and on client click. So let's flip this web form to the source mode. And I'm going to use use submit behavior. And I'm going to set this to false. In a bit, we'll understand why we will have to set this attribute to false. And then I'm going to use on client click attribute. So basically, I'm going to use some script to disable the button. So this dot disabled equals true. And this dot value equals 
please wait okay so with this change let's go ahead and run the web form once again and look at this now let's go ahead and truncate this table so at the moment we don't have any records now let's enter mark as the name again look at this as soon as I click the button the first time the button is immediately disabled and while the button is disabled you know even when we click nothing is going to happen so now look at this we have only one record stored now I click the button look at that I click so many times but nothing is happening because the button is disabled and until the request has completed processing the button was disabled as soon as the request has completed processing that's when it is enabled so now you know look at that we get another mark record because we clicked it the second time now let's understand why we will have to use this use submit behavior attribute now let's inspect the code that is generated by ASP.NET look at this the button that we have used here is an ASP.NET button control when the ASP.NET process this request it's actually going to generate an input you know type equals button okay and look at this on click attribute you know this dot disabled equals true this dot value equals please wait that is something that we have specified using this on client click attribute in addition to those two things that is this dot disabled and this dot value we also have another piece of code here look at that there is a function called underscore underscore do post back okay so what is this function this is the function that is automatically injected by ASP.NET okay and this is the function which is going to cause the post back to occur when we click this submit button if that piece of JavaScript is not there that is this underscore underscore do post back function if that function is not there then the page will not be posted to the server and the reason that underscore underscore do post back function is generated is because we have used this attribute use submit behavior equals false if we don't use this attribute let's look at what's going to happen so I removed that attribute now if we remove that attribute the default behavior is you know um, you submit behavior equals true that will be true by default okay and since that will be true by default ASP.NET is not going to generate that method underscore underscore do post back which is going to cause the post back to occur when we click that button so when we view the page source notice that now we only have uh, this dot disabled equals true this dot value equals please wait but we don't have that underscore underscore do post back and because of that when I click this button look at that nothing is going to happen it is not going to cause the page to post back to the server okay that's why we will have to use use submit behavior and set that attribute to false now let's see how to disable an image button because that's slightly different okay so instead of using the regular button I'm going to now use an image button so let's drag and drop an image button control from the toolbox and I'm going to make use of these two images okay so let's copy these two images and within our web application project let's add a new folder and let's name this images and paste the images that we have just copied okay and we're going to set image URL attribute of the image button to images for slash submit dot PNG and, and this is how the submit button looks like okay and now let's go ahead and double click the submit button to generate the click even handler now when we click the submit button we want to do the same thing that is save data to the database and make the thread sleep for 3000 milliseconds so let's copy that and paste it here alright now let's flip this form to the source mode now just like the button you know if we try to use that attribute use submit behavior we can't because 
the image button control does not have that attribute okay but if we don't use that attribute what's the problem it's not going to generate that underscore underscore do post back JavaScript function which is going to cause the page to be posted to the server when we click that image button so since we don't have that use submit behavior attribute we can actually use another function a server side function so within the page load event image button one dot attributes dot add and we want to add on click attribute so this is basically the client side click event so to the client side click event here is what we want to associate we want to disable the button this dot disabled equals true semicolon and to that I want to append underscore underscore do post back method and to generate that method I'm going to use a different class client script and this met, uh, class has got get post back event reference function okay so what is this function going to do this is going to generate that underscore underscore do post back function which is going to cause the post back to occur when we click this image button okay and this function you know requires two parameters the control uh, reference so the control is image button one image button one and then using the second parameter you can specify any optional arguments that you want to pass to the control that is going to cause the post back to occur we don't have any parameters that we want to pass so I'm going to specify null for that parameter okay and to that I want to append semicolon now what we want to do is after the button is disabled we want to display this image within that image button control which is basically a visual indicator for the user uh, to wait okay because the server is still processing so please wait so and the name of this image is wait.png which is present in the images folder so I'm going to say this dot src equals images for slash weight dot png and then a semicolon all right so let's save these changes let's go ahead and run this page one more time and let's enter John and click the submit button look at that we get please wait and that at that point when we click nothing is going to happen and John record is inserted only once thank you for listening and have a great day